Okay, we're going to start off with one bunch of uh, green onions, five cloves of fresh garlic, uh, one bunch, uh, quarter bunch of fresh chopped parsley, and one whole lemon. And here we have elephant garlic. Um, fresh Louisiana crawfish tail meat and two pieces of fresh tilapia bought at my local seafood market all right and um, just to show you a little bit so you can see uh, the brand there crawfish tail meat is already cooked that makes a difference and your pots ladies and gentlemen must be heated uh, your skillet for your blanket of grilled fish your pan for your uh, crawfish sauce and your pot for your boiling water this has to be already uh, heat it up and ready to go okay and uh, some fresh grated uh, Romano cheese and uh, here while we weren't looking I chopped up some uh, green onions very very fine I'll show you that method eventually uh, lemons make sure you uh, pit, take all of the yeah, pits the, out of the lemon because you're going to use that to squeeze onto the blackened fish or the grilled fish and what that does is you know it uh, kind of gives it a better, better flavor and it keeps it moist and uh, until you're ready to eat it and it's just delicious on on the top of the blackened fish so um, then i'm showing off here my knives the uh immersive knives stainless steel and carbon carbon steel makes it's a good set of knives to use at home and also for beginners in the kitchen and uh, for professional use I recommend the Henkel brand from Germany stainless steel uh, perfect is perfection all right let's move on here and now It looks like the skillet is nice and smoky and white in the middle. Uh, the pan in the front is hot and your water is now boiling. So that's a good sign how we can get started by adding uh, a little bit of fine Mediterranean sea salt to your water. Not too much. It's going to give your pasta just a little flavor, a little taste. I also add at least two tablespoons, two teaspoons, I'm sorry, of olive oil to that water as well. And uh, it helps the pasta to stay separated while boiling. Uh, and you, while moving around with your fork, you get an opportunity to um, uh, check it without it becoming pasty and sticking to everything. Now, the Creole Chef Spice Blend mix is a blend of herbs, spices, freshly uh, blended at a local uh, uh, warehouse here, and um, made with fresh, only the freshest ingredients. No salt, no MSG, uh, no phosphates, no. Uh, silicon dioxide or anything to keep it separate that's why sometimes you're going to see lumps just take your hand uh, break the lumps up um, it's 
spread it on your fish back and front. Don't be afraid to, to season uh, your fish. Um, it is not hot. Uh, uh, Cajun or uh, Creole food is not hot. Doesn't burn your mouth. And uh, some fresh olive oil, just enough to coat the fish. And what you want to do is just spread it a bit on top and then on the back and put it there on your grill. The grill is nice and hot. It's smoking. That's what you want. You really want it to smoke. As soon as it hit the grill, that's a sign that it's going to taste wonderful because the smoke has a wonderful flavor to it uh, all on its own. Now to check the pasta, uh, just give it a swirl, take a look at it, pick it up, squeeze it, whatever it is you do, uh, make sure that it doesn't overcook, it's the worst thing you can have is mushy pasta, uh, time to turn the fish over, it probably cooked here for about uh, 3 to 4 minutes on that side. And the first side, and turn it over to the second side. Grill is nice and hot. You see that nice char mark on there? Uh, that's a good sign. Now, for the uh, crawfish sauce, I uh, use cube butter, uh, sweet, creamy land of lakes, and that you can measure. Uh, they come in two ounce uh, rectangle pieces. I call it cube, I know it's a rectangle but it's a, a, a two ounce piece. There are one, two, three, four tablespoons. So uh, either way you want to measure it, you can measure it. And so now um, we're gonna get ready to it. it those always amaze me. And uh, let's add in uh, the three of those four pieces of butter and all of the chopped garlic and we're going to let it simmer down for a little bit there there you go just a little bit of parsley and green onion dropped in there uh, it won't hurt anything but you see the pan is hot the butter is controlled it's not burning uh, you can add some spice to it now about a table a tablespoonful um, Go ahead and just stir the pot, move it around uh, to uh, keep your heat balanced in your skillet or braising pan or whatever you use. This is a braiser, a small braising skillet with two handles and uh, that way I can control the butter and the garlic. The garlic can cook till it uh, becomes clear and uh, I'm not trying to brown it at all and I'm not trying to brown the butter and I'm not trying to uh, cook the herbs uh, rather just allowing it to uh, almost blanch in, inside of there and now we're going to add one pint of heavy cream to the mixture mm. you can use a white whisk Let's get too much, uh, it can break. Uh, so I use a wooden spoon to stir it and keep it on a medium heat. There you, uh, uh, you go. Uh, whisk it in the beginning to kind of blend in the butter and the spices into the, the cream. Uh, that way, uh, once it Binds. There you go, and it gives you uh, that sauce uh, ability to reduce. And you turn your fire down to a simmer now, and just let it roll. It, it began to boil, but once it boils, you turn your fire from medium to low. Once you turn it to low, then it would just simmer and reduce down as much as you want it to until it becomes thick as you want it to 
without breaking. If you ball it too much, it will break. So you can use a spoon or whisk to slow down the balling process. Uh, I'm watching it. I uh, know the temperature there. Uh, on the pasta here, I rinsed it off with a little cool water. And then I drained it uh, in the colander. And I added about uh, two tablespoons of olive oil to the cooked pasta. Now the cream has reduced to the consistency I like, uh, which is a, a nice sauce, uh, cream sauce consistency. Um, then I added the fresh crawfish tails here with the fat to the mixture and that's going to give it some flavor. It's, the fire is still on, but you cannot see uh, the activity in the pot because I don't want the cream to curdle. I don't want the butter and cream to separate. And I don't want my crawfish to overcook and shrivel up and become invisible in the pot. Uh, too many times we've seen crawfish just disappear in the pot as you can see the activity and the uh, cream has turned a little orange with the, because of the fat uh, uh, in the crawfish tail meat uh, you don't have to cook the crawfish tail it's already cooked crawfish tail meat I'm just letting it you know absorb absorb the uh, the, the, the flavors in, in together and uh, now I'm going to add my chopped green onions and chopped parsley oh it's fresh and it smells so good I can eat it just like that now my fresh grated parmigiana oh 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 uh, I'm sorry, Romano, oh forgive me, Parmigiano grates too fine and it's, it's hard to find good Parmesan and it, it, it has a distinct uh, flavor that's not unique or conducive or agreeable to Creole Cajun food, I think. Save it for the Italian food, the meatballs. Anyway, this way you can get a nice melt on this uh, Romano cheese and it melt smooth. It, is, it melts smoothly. It won't crumble on your tongue or you know taste like a meatball or Italian food. But it's very uh, classy. It has a nice smooth um, way of just hitting the palate makes everything else taste good. You can taste that cheese. So it's, it's, it's hot, it's melted, but it's not dissolved, it's not hard and chewy. It's perfect. Get a spoon and taste as you go. But make sure you discard the spoon and use a, a new spoon each time you taste. Um, you can buy those spoons uh, a dime a dozen. Anyway, um, I think this is what I like. Uh, this is what I want. So I'm going to turn the fire off here. It's uh, The pot is hot. The pan is hot. It's going to continue to reduce. It's still moving. I can see it. A lot of you cannot. If you look really good, it's still moving around. It's still cooking. But it's not too active. Like a volcano where you want it to boil or curdle or break it still can break at this point and now you can add another teaspoon of uh, a tablespoon of uh, Creole Chef Spice blend to it that's the seafood blend and stir it in with your wooden spoon fork <laughs> it's a spoon it's a fork it's a fork spoon it's a spark yeah, let's do that. Let's call it a spark. So, there you go. And I don't want to beat it too much. So, just kind of fold it in there a little bit and move it around. 
easy and it's sitting, it's ready. It's ready for the pasta. You can either pour your pasta into it now if you are going to serve it immediately and toss your pasta around and serve it on the plate to your guests. But I chose to put my pasta in a separate bowl, toss it around, and add my blackened fish to it, and then add a little sauce right on top of the blackened fish. And with a little artichoke and sweet tomato and fresh green goddess avocado uh, drizzle there on that dressing. Uh, boy, that looks good. That's one presentation. Or if you like, you can serve the pasta uh, completely separate in a dish by itself with some grated Romano on top. Look at the color, uh, your fish on the side with a little sauce, um, mm, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, uh, I say at this point, it's enough talk, it's time to eat, yeah, give me a bite, I need, um, mm, mm, mm. Well, that was good.